We have covered the first two volumes of Otto Julius Bierbaum's 1908 Sonderbare Geschichten in episode 243 and 355. Today we will finish the final volume. Right off the bat, Bierbaum gets on my nerves as he starts with a 33-page poem. Worse, the holy mime is a huge departure from Bierbaum's decadent writing in Volume 1. This is a fully straight, bare-bones, didactic, moralistic poem on the conversion to Christianity of Roman actor Galassimus and his martyrdom for the faith. If anything, it is anti-decadent. Hans Verst and the Giant is one of the two good stories in the book. Concerning Hans Verst, a ne'er-do-well going about tricking people and murdering them so he can cook them and feed them to the giant Rumbo. Going so far as to try and cook the devil himself who comes riding along in a car powered by exploding human souls. The Heavy Child Blessing is a somewhat tedious poem of a dumb countess in Brabant, insisting a woman who had triplets had to have been bedded by multiple men because an honest woman can never have triplets, threatening and pestering her while still in childbed. Anna Margret and the Free Bachelors is the story of three robber knight siblings who kidnap a young woman to cook and clean for them and then kill each other over her who then leaves as one is not enough for her. Messina Michel is the other good story in the book of a man who borrows money from a pastor then dupes him into forgiving him by pretending to be dead and then selling him a pipe for raising people from the dead. The pastor commits a nice domestic murder on the back of this and so he tries to drown Michel but Michel switches places with an old man while taking the old man's swine and then gets to drown the pastor and take all his money instead. The brave district forester is based entirely on King Leberecht while dragging his whole court up a mountain forgetting to zip up his fly, and the entire government fearing the overthrow of the state in a bloody revolution should anyone notice it, until a forester just tells him, the heirs of the Holy Fringilla has Prince Flodoard married to Princess Eulalia but she leaves much to be desired appearance-wise. So Flodoard keeps going to sleep with Fanny, an actress in the city instead. Finding out about this, Eulalia has him wear the holy relic of the title, but never notices he is wearing a fake as Fanny put her own hair in there and the prince happily continues to cheat. The much-loved woman is a poetic adaptation of part of the Tutinama, or Tales of a Parrot, a 14th century series of tales in Persian. The story concerns a newlywed wife wanting very desperately to leave the house to be unfaithful to her new husband, but the family parrot always stops her by telling her a story that holds her until it's way too late to go anywhere. This story concerns a few wanderers meeting up and going together down the road. Finding a fallen tree, the woodcutter shapes it into the shape of a woman. The jeweler covers her with jewels. The tailor makes her clothes, and the last one begs God to give her life, and he does. But some stranger comes along and takes her for his runaway wife. So he ties them all up to have the Cardi sentence them to death. But the Cardi thinks she is his beloved, as does a hermit saint with extremely long nails. A brawl breaks out, but then an old man shows up and the woman disappears. The man then is her, absorbing her into himself and then making the sun go up. I have no idea why.